the spirit of the waters held the spirits of the leviathans close to her heart. The leviathans, the greatest living creatures of the deep, the whales, control the oceans. The spirit of the water conveyed to them this thought. Now the time has come to emit the sound. It must circulate throughout my being. The sound of the healing must be felt by all the creatures of the oceans. Leviathans, are you ready? We are few almost extinct now, and yet we are ready. Our blood mixes into your blood, and we move deeper into unknown reaches. We have gathered in the deepest troughs between the sea mounts of Hawaii, where the spirit of fire dwells. This is the place where fire and water meet at the tearing of the earth. From here we shall emit the sound. The sound will travel along the faults where the fire can emerge most easily. We will resonate around the covered craters and calderas. The fire and the wind will move through the waters and the memory of this extraordinary time of transformation will return. Moving over the forests around Burg Eltz in his mind, Felin, in his subtle form, was walking hand in hand with the spirit of pain, his most beloved friend and mentor. O oh, my best beloved, where are you leading me? We go now to the repository of power. Do you know the use of power? And suddenly the spirit of pain turned on his friend and bore into him viciously. Lashes cut into his old wounds. High voltage lurched through his unresisting body sending him sprawling. Manacles cut into his thin and wasted flesh. The spirit of pain watched the ordeal from far, assessing the scene in the dark prison below the castle. Feline woke up swollen and wet, Sticky from his spilt blood that wet the floor and added to the stench. Oh, my friend, let me die into you one more time. And the spirit of pain expertly lifted the etheric form of Feline's damaged body into his comforting embrace. He absorbed the surrender into himself, and with that, Feline's pain melted. The emptied space in his being was filled with light and power. Feline felt elated, euphoric even, floating in his joy. But the vigilant spirit of pain sent him this thought. 
quiet now. Be still. Stay focused and you will receive the message. In silent focus, he began to feel the vibration, the low hum, that sonorous and cavernous sound became just audible as it traveled through his body. The distant sound from the Leviathans touched his mind. His desecrated flesh and veins, his crushed and twisted bones took in the resonance. And very slowly, over long hours and long days, they returned to their original form. The rhythmic pulse continued day after day, night after night, penetrating his body and soul, nurturing the starved man, restoring his strength. New blood began to course through his being, the stone floor absorbed the filth and became clean, a little softer under his legs and back. Sweeter air filled his nostrils and lungs. Sweetness covered his tongue and nurtured his stomach. His mind became clear and alert. His being felt the power accumulating, and he understood something that he could not articulate. At the end of Feline's ordeal, the noble stag appeared again and stood before him hitting the ground soundlessly with his right hoof. Let's go, he indicated. Okay, let's go. Feline climbed onto his back and they shot into the night, instantly reaching great heights and seeing again the curvature of the earth. They flew between the deep blue sky and the lighter shining blue of the ocean, like the silver arrow of a distant jet. An explosion, and suddenly, dreamlike, he was plunging into the waters far below. The stag had vanished. Alone, Feline was pulled into the depths, daylight disappearing, while some glimmering lights indicated the presence of deep-sea monstrous creatures. Finally, he lay still on the bottom feeling the great weight of the ocean above him. The sound of the leviathans was resonating loudly all around him. Currents of slightly different colours, tinged with phosphorescent points of light, flowed around him while he lay. His mind began to expand and open like a huge screen. Dim scenes appeared, and he could see the ghostly shapes of unremembered ancient memories of a time before time. 
he could feel the flow of time circling through him, leaving trace memories on his mind screen. The next instant, he was once again in the sky. The whole sky became his mind screen and a flashback of ghostly scenes became more easily remembered. Battles, people rushing past him, animals running, mountains pulling him into their secret chambers. Ships tossed by violent storms, plunging into the waters, drowning, then emerging new. Sunshine and beautiful women and girls dancing with him. Sweet music carried him into a reverie. He awoke to loud clanging, screeching, whining, and light entered the cell, followed by men in uniform. Get up! They pulled at his manacled wrists and released his feeble frame. Stand up and walk, they ordered. The stag's etheric form suddenly became discernible as he gently helped Feline to his feet with his antlers. You can do it. I will walk beside you. They won't see me. A uniformed man on either side, Feline walked down the stone corridor past caged ghostly forms. He saw some eyes, some fingers. Look straight ahead, one growled. Keep walking. In there. Shower. Shave. Get cleaned up and put on those clothes. The etheric stag stayed with him. Feline's eyes could not get accustomed to the glaring lights. He peered into the mirror. He could not recognize the thin, hairy man looking back at him. His hands trembled. He looked down at his body. It was all right. Actually, it did belong to the man in the mirror. There was a shower stall. He turned on the water and let it flow over him, drenching him. He had forgotten to remove his ragged prison uniform. Suddenly, he felt a surge of energy flowing through him and he tore off those horrid rags. Stripped naked now, he stroked off caked blood and other filth from his scarred skin. The water ran brown away from him. How long had it been since he had taken a shower? He looked around and saw soap and a razor. Carefully, he shaved his foreign face nicking the skin in several places, for his hands were still trembling out of control. Hurry up, a deep voice growled. Get on with it, we don't have all day. He found a towel and quickly put on the underwear, slacks and shirt they had shoved at him. There were shoes also, no socks. In his confusion, he grasped at small details. He emerged puzzled. Was he free to go? 
there was only one uniformed man now. Follow me. Through that door. This is your lawyer. You may go now. He slammed the door, and Feline found himself standing in front of a young black man with a wide face and clear eyes smiling at him. John Jarecki, your attorney, he held out his hand, and Feline stood staring blankly. What? he said. What's going on? How did you find me? Where are we going? He could feel his body swaying. Perhaps he was going to faint. Jarecki caught him and gently lowered him into a chair. You are free now. Come with me. We don't need to be here one moment longer. Let's get out of here. Come on. They were outside in the clear afternoon air. The smell of the air, the warmth of the sun, the green of the grass and trees soaked into Feline's starved being. They walked a few hundred metres, entered into a portal between two craggy rocks, and began the warp speed travel through the atmospheric wormholes. Within a few minutes they emerged in a completely different landscape. Warm desert wind blew through his hair as Feline gazed at a beautiful sunrise over the flat land around Fort Stockton, Texas. Get in the car. We have a long drive ahead. First, I'm taking you to a specialized private clinic. You need to get checked out. We need you in perfect shape now. Do you understand? Feline nodded uncomprehendingly. He was in a daze. His erstwhile contact with reality, the stag, had disappeared. John was speaking, but Feline turned him off in his mind and slipped into a reverie, silently assessing the situation. Who was this John Jarecki? He was trying to remember where he had met him before. They were on Highway 10, driving fast now, and the intense, glaring sunlight made the landscape shimmer with mirages. By the time they reached the clinic, he was in an altered state of consciousness. His mind registered vague images of white-clothed figures, machines, gurneys, beeps, lights, strange liquids injected into him, and coursing through his body, changing its colour and feel like internal rivers. Then darkness. He awakened as the car came to a halt at a service area. We have to stop for gas now. Do you want to use the bathroom? Want a coffee? A sandwich? Yes, of course I do. He felt extremely hungry now. The fresh air and light had changed him, whetted his appetite. He was coming to his senses. He was free. The external world was there, although now it seemed somehow different. How long had he been in prison? He had no idea. What date is it? Why are we in Texas? Who are you? Where are you taking me? His new situation was hard to comprehend. 
His awareness of how and why he had been in the dungeon was as cloudy as his sudden release. Feline knew it was connected with a former life which had strangely got mixed up with the current one. The only way he could get clarity was through entering his subconscious, and that required special practice and power. Feline and John sat together in the cafeteria drinking milky coffee and munching on a cheese sandwich. John started to talk. For this next assignment, your name is Philip Green. You were born 11th February 1989 in Shawbridge, Ohio. You are an American. You are an accountant. You have worked for Tynum, Blerick and Witz for the past 15 years. Your wife and child recently died in a serious car accident. You are now going for training as treasurer and special assistant to the Abbot of Williamsford Monastery, UK. It's in the Pennines. You have a flight to catch in three hours. Here is your passport. Right, said Fideen. Back to an old identity. Okay, when do I get my detailed instructions? Sorry, here's the envelope. There is cash and details of your bank account, credit cards, the works. I'm leaving you here now. The GPS navigation system will take you to the airport. Just leave the car in the parking lot and take the flight. Your ticket is in the envelope. Cheers. And with that, he vanished. Then, from the shadows came a disembodied, telepathic voice in his mind. We are tracking you, in case you get any ideas. Have a good one. Were these the trackers from the Havelshields group, or other agents? Feline was trying to expand his special mental capacity to catch the vibration of their identity but it was not clear. Right, said Feline to himself. He settled into the blue Ford Mustang, checked the glove compartment for the papers. Everything was in Philip Green's name. Okay, let's go, he said, as he drove to Houston Airport. Delta flight 730 at 1045 to London Heathrow on time. He was checking in the suitcase he had found in the trunk, its keys in his pocket. Pondering in the waiting area of the airport, he wondered what was next. Yeah.